Hey guys, I'm Phil O'Neill from Australia. I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video post, we're going to talk about the second study from Herbert Clark's technical studies for the cornet slash trumpet. As I mentioned in the introduction, today we're going to be talking about Clark's technical studies. We're going to talk about his second study in particular. This video is part of a series of posts where I talk about practice in the general. I've started with a warm up and I'm moving all the way through to the end of, a like, end of a practice routine, so to speak, where I cover all the different aspects of how I practice. If you haven't seen my other videos, go back and check those out, you might find them useful as well. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to build a big community of the trumpet worldwide so that we can talk about how we all get better um, and how we all practice to get better. So, back onto the Clark's Technical Studies book. Now, I've got this one here. It's a fantastic book. This one is definitely a top five must-have trumpet player books, right? I use this one every single day and I've had this one for a long time. In fact, I've, it's so useful, I have two of them. One in red, one in white. Now, I'll leave a link in the description for it. Um, they're not very expensive, I think they're only 20 bucks. Um, if you also click the link that I'm leaving in the description, it'll also help me out, I'll get a few cents for anything you purchase through that link. Now, I'm gonna talk about the second study here. Now, the way that he's got it written, he's written it just as a straight study, and it sounds like this. Now that's that cool. Now, I like to amend this slightly. Now my first tip for practicing this one is I always use a metronome. I set the speed not too fast, not too slow, nice and steady where I've got complete control over my fingers. Now the next thing I've got to think about is this, this is not a valve exercise, this is an airflow exercise. So if you haven't yet learned the notes, go and learn the notes very, very slowly and be very, very deliberate with it of all the keys. Now it's also very clever to do this over the entire range of the instrument. Now my next step is the way that I practice this. I add two minims to the start of this exercise. Now each line I'll play the starting note of the key and then the note below that in the key. The two minims to the start of it and then I start the exercise. Something like this. I then go back and do the repeat and I tongue the second time. So slow first time, tongue second time. I'll then add to this where I'll do a bar of tonguing as well, a bar of tonguing before the long note. So I'll change keys, so it'll give you a, diff a different key to explain in this in, but the same vibe, slur the two, the two minims at the start of the exercise, slur the exercise through the first time, tongue it through the second time, and then I'll tongue a bar of quavers at the end. That way I'm working the airflow while slurring, but I'm also working the airflow while tonguing. I'm also holding the last note as a pause, and I'm always diminuendoing down to nothing, right? As soft as I can control, um, and then a little bit further. Another variation I do of this is, for advanced players, is I flutter tongue the first time through, and I will slur the second time. Usually, I will alternate between slurring and tonguing, and flutter tonguing and slurring. So flutter tonguing will sound like this.
So the reason I flutter tongue is because if you're flutter tonguing, it actually highlights where your air isn't working so well. So if, you, if your flutter tonguing is to stop, that's where you're choking off the air. So by getting that smooth flutter tongue all the way through the exercise means that the air is working nicely through that exercise. Now, each key is different, some keys are better than others, but they're the ones to work on. Now, my next step is for advanced players. Now, in addition to the two minims at the start, the slur or flutter tongue the first time through, the tongue or slur the second time through, and the quavers, I then add lip bends to the end of the exercise. I, where I will play, for argument's sake, the key that I just played then was D, I'll then play D and I'll hold the D, but I will valve E flat, E, then back to E flat, then back to D again, while still holding the D. So if I play it by itself, it'll sound like this. Now I do this at the end of each exercise, just to make sure that I'm still playing in the middle of the pitch on the horn. Uh, it'll highlight if I'm pinching throughout the exercise and therefore another way of highlighting that the air isn't flowing properly. I'll change keys again and give you another demonstration of how I do it for advanced players. I'll give you the demonstration of the slurred then tongue first. Change keys again, and I'll do flutter tongue first, slurred second, and, and then have the lip bends at the end. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is definitely a flow study and not a valve study. Um, there, I'll talk about valve studies in another, another video, um, but we're talking primarily about the air at the moment. I'll continue doing these, the whole register of the horn, as high as I can do with a good sound and clean articulation. So, going up higher. one that Clark's written is this one. So as you noticed just then, the lip bends get much harder the higher you go. So don't feel like you have to keep the tempo the same the higher you go with the lip bends. You still want to keep the exercise in time as best as you can, but if you need to change the, the lip bends at the end to crotchets or minims, that's perfectly fine as well. The whole point of it is just to make sure that your chops are still centered and you're playing down the middle of the horn. Now guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you've got any comments about how you practice your, your Clark exercises, I'd love to hear them. If you guys have got any other ideas on how to practice them, I'd love to hear that as well. At the moment, I'm aiming for three videos a week, and you guys hitting subscribe is really helping me stay motivated to keep this going as long as possible. If you don't already own the Clark book, I really strongly suggest you go and buy one. I've got a link in the description, and if you use that link to go and buy it, I'll get a few cents from that purchase, and it'll really help me out for doing these videos. Once again, I'm Phil O'Neill from Australia, and happy practicing.